Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, it's this week's episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville, season four, episode three, Read It and Weep, baby. Yeah, man. If we have to weep about this, this day going oh, photo. photo one more time. Yeah. Carlos, we're going to have to have a conversation because I'm over it. Yeah. But let's just go ahead and get into this episode. It wasn't a whole lot, but there's a whole lot of nuggets and... We, we got some talking points that we want to talk about within this episode, right? So we start off, we have the fellas over at Black, and we see that Maurice came over to have a conversation with his brother. <laughs> was like, listen, dog, we don't had a whole family meeting. We don't had an ambush. And yet, I still feel like you owe me an apology. <laughs> and Marceau was like, dog, I don't owe you nothing because you lied. Like, you got to admit that you lied. And he was like, but I admitted that I was there before <laughs> you put the photo out. So basically what had happened was Maurice lawyered the conversation. Yeah. He answered it in the way it really was asked, if you ask me. Because when he when the question was asked, I was like, he's answering it in a way that he's going to be truthful without saying the whole oh, truth. truth. Yeah. And the answer. The question was, have you ever been in the presence of them to see Martel's feelings towards her? Right. So, but, but it came across as, as if, if he was saying you wasn't, you wasn't there. there. Yeah. So he lawyered <laughs> that answer. So in the midst of between the reunion and that picture coming out, Maurice was like, I already admitted that I was there. But Maso said the world. Yeah. That ain't what the world, world heard, things, yeah. Craig. Yeah, it's not clear that you was there. So I was setting the record straight that you was there, <laughs> bro. <bruh. laughs> I was like, oh my God. So Marcel said, listen, I'll give Kimmy an, an apology, apology before I, I give what? you an apology. I was like, the brother thing. I said, so this is when you realize Ooh. that the brothers are way more alike than they are different. Right. Because they, <laughs> They have a way of answering questions in a way that keeps it open-ended, yep. but giving you the correct answer you need, but also with a clause around it. It's almost like an insurance policy. Like your insurance said that if you die today, you get $100,000, but the clause say you got to get hit by a bus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Or if you got flood insurance and the water comes up, uh, you can't get covered. And you're like, how else is the water going to come in my house unless it comes up? That part. That part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or my car. <laughs> mm, we don't want to talk about yeah. that. Uh, speaking of, I hope y'all won't hung up in no tornadoes and stuff. We've been yeah, man. in it since Friday. Yeah. But we it was, good. It was crazy around here. Yeah. But um, so then Martel ends up coming on in. And Martel was like, listen, maybe I owe <laughs> Maurice an apology because I poke fun at it too. Too dead in the comments talking about some dog. No, you were there. Listen, all of this could have. Was this a setup? Was this a setup that Todd came in with the bull <laughs> so that we could have something to talk about this season? Like, was was this going to come up and they was like, Maurice, lie. <laughs> yeah. So that we could have. But Maurice, he, I mean, I mean. Because this I, isn't Maurice's character. Right. But, but. Uh, Marso knew when he put that picture out, he knew what chain of events was going to follow behind that picture. That's why I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, he calculated, out, man. Did he Todd put them up and come with the bull? <laughs> did Todd do that? Because this makes no sense to me <sighs> at all. But anyway, so Martel ends up talking to Marceau. And he was like, you know, I've been having conversations with Lou, you know. And I feel like you come off at him a little, you know, a little strong. You, and then he said, you bullying them. And you like, bullying them. And, and Marceau was like, hold on, dog. What we not fitting to do is to take their side on something that they interjected themselves into. Like, they have constantly come at us about our marriage. When I asked them, Skip. Right. And I said, you know what? I give that to you, Marceau. Yeah. Y'all ain't asked them for nothing. But right. yet, and I think the whole thing about it is, we had this conversation off, off um, record, is that when you first get in a group with people, you got to learn what their dynamic is before you put your mouth on anything. And even putting your mouth on anything, have they opened that door for you to be able to tell them anything? Right. Because they could, they might be cool with what's going on. Right. Everything that doesn't look good to you does not need your opinion spoken out loud. And that and that and that principle only don't only applies to marriage. Mm -hmm. That's in any situation. If you don't have all the facts and all the information, and if you was not to ask your opinion, keep your lips shut. 
And you may have something great to say. Right. It, it doesn't mean that the other person is receptive into, ta- into hearing it. Right. And then vice versa, when they met Marceau, and what if Marceau them took their years of experience of marriage and put it on them like, nah, dog, y'all only been married for a year, so you need to do this, you need to do that. Right. Y'all, y'all ain't doing this right. No. Yeah. Unsolicited advice is... His, yeah, and it's a delicate. A in your mouth. It does, and it's a it, and it's a delicate line because we all are guilty of it. I mean, right. yeah, we have a whole show where we give our unsolicited advice, but we also try to give it in a way that is fair. Yeah, that is thoughtful. We're not going to attack anybody. All of that good stuff, and that's what I really felt like what Lou and his wife Tiffany was doing was they were taking everything that they saw as them being better at and attacking them yeah. with it, and like you need to do this better. And ain't nobody like that. I, but, I don't get it. But I think that's a part of our makeup is that you you want, when you learn something, you want somebody else to learn it too. But at the yeah. same time, you don't understand that they don't want to learn it. And if they don't want to learn it, you can't make, make them, them learn it. <laughs> and they may not want to do it like you. Right. So if they don't want to learn it, you like to, like, I always say like the Bible says. Oh, God. Don't cast your pearls before the swine. Leave. Yeah. So, Marceau basically told Martel, listen, if you throw a match at my house, then I'm going to turn around and burn burn yours yours down. down. (laughs) Like, so, if you're going to open up this boxing match, be prepared to get your tail knocked out and then don't cry about it when I hit you in the same place that you've been hitting me at. So, that's basically, and I'm with Marceau on this one. I, I don't like that about Tiffany Lewis. I wish there was something else that they would bring to the table that will make them more likable. But this whole interjecting and acting like I know what you don't know. Yeah. And because this is my second go around, we have the, all the answers. I'm going to Ayala the situation. The one word we're looking from now. Transparency. Transparency. That's it. That's it. That's Not it. perfection. Cause we no. don't we don't care about that. We At we all. know that y'all have issues, man. Yeah, that's that's like no no secret. It's just transparency. Just mm-hmm. just admit that you got fired, man. I mean that's it. <laughs> I've been fired. I've been fired a few times. Oh. But I'm still here to live to be able to let you know that I've been fired. You got that good unemployment from it. Sometimes I did, and sometimes <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> so Marceau agreed that listen. I'm going to have a meeting with Big Lou and we're going to hash this thing out and see where we can go from there. And I'm saying in my own mind, why is there a meeting to be had? I right. mean, in my opinion, maybe it's because I'm a Leo and an introvert. I said what I said. And at this point, moving forward, you're either going to approach me correctly or don't deal with me at all. Right. That's how I feel about the situation. It's nothing that we need to talk about because if you... Let's go ahead and move forward a little bit. So Lewis and Tiffany are at the house, and Tiffany is telling Lewis about her interaction at the pajama party and whatnot. So they get back on to the, I don't understand what everyone's problem is with me. And I'm sitting here like, am I the only (laughs) one that's losing their motherfucking mind? Right. Because how many ways, how many languages do anyone have to tell you that the only problem they've had with you all is the interjection into other people's business when uh, you have yet to be transparent about, about your yours. own. Yep, that's it. They made it real clear. <laughs> yeah. Very clear. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't understand what's this thing about I don't understand. And then you get Lou getting big mad against you. You got your, ha- yeah. your mm, <laughs> handed to you at the reunion about talking skit. When the cameras are rolling, that you don't have that same energy in person. Talking about something, you know, because when his this, and I've been knowing him, and I've been knowing people with big personality. I don't know him since with Monaco. Monaco. And I'm like, and so Tiffany was like, do you think y'all going to get into a fight or something? No, nah, but if this is what we own, this is what we own. Don't, that's a threat. That's a threat. That's a threat. Because when I hear it. And when I hear it, like Tony Rock say, it's gonna be a misunderstanding. <laughs> See, when you when you get when you get around our age, man, I guess I can speak for the fellas. Man, you ain't trying to throw no hands, man. No, you got too much to <clears throat> lose at this age. Yeah, you you trying to live your best life, man. You trying to be on somebody's beach somewhere mm-hmm. with your lady or your significant other. Trying, you know, trying to be romantic and <laughs> and good stuff like that. You ain't thinking about trying to throw no hands, man. No. No, nah, that's the last thing on my mind. Yeah. 
It is what it is. <laughs> and that's that's. I threw people. enough hands, man, in my teens. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> over <laughs> some BS. You throwing hands over some BS. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, the last time the judge told me, he said, he called my, uh, my, yeah, right. ma my maiden last <laughs> name. Right. He said, I don't ever want to see you in my court again. And I said, yes, sir, you won't. And he you didn't. Been, and you ain't been back. <laughs> I said, you ain't got to worry about like that. They say, you ain't got to worry about me. I said, oh, judge, because this time I got off easy that time. Right. I ain't coming back. So at this age, you be like, if I have to throw hands, it's going to be very justifiable why I have Absolutely. to throw the hands, man. Absolutely. Mine was justifiable. You sure about that? <laughs> it just ended up in court because it was so bad. But... It was, it was justifiable, but it ended up in court. It did. It ended up in court. <laughs> I'm not going to get into it. It ended up badly, but it was justifiably bad. Put it that way. So I ain't get no charges, if that's what you want to know. No charge. No charge. You got off like Will did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> over there at Mel's house, we see her daughter, Mariah. And Mariah it wants to get into the whole acting thing and whatnot. And her mom is really encouraging that putting her into classes, new running lines with her. I love that. Yeah. Um, even within that, she um, had a conversation with her daughter about full independence as a woman, being able to take care of yourself, not being, you know, having to depend on other people to do things for you or fun things for you that you can provide yourself. I thought it was a very good conversation. I just hope it was coming from a unbiased place right. um, and not trying to trigger that young girl's mind about her father. But I love the conversation because it is a conversation that I don't think a lot of people have with their children. Yeah. So I, I enjoy the conversation. And um, so let's go back to Martel. Martel has decided that he wants to make a sweet red wine. And I first thing I thought, and I said, I ain't mad at you, Martel, Hell because yeah, huh? every player needs a hustle. Yeah. Because I said, Martel don't drink. Right. <laughs> but I All said, right, we only see them drink when they going out with the fellas, but yes. that, yeah. But I said, you know what? <clears throat> so you ain't got to drink it to sell it. You ain't got to get high on your own supply. Right. That's the best kind of business person. Right. Like so, one, like one of our good friends said, you ain't got to be, you ain't got, got to, to like love it. it, love it. You just got to be good at it. And I said, you know what? I ain't know. True. She said, do you think the people that make toilet paper is in love with toilet paper? Why? They're just good at producing it. I <laughs> said, shut the hell up. <laughs> I said, because that hit me right upside my head. Hell? We were talking about this idea. And I was like, I don't love it. She said, but you're good at it, though. Yeah. And I said, shut up. <laughs> Mind your business while we keep on talking. Mm -hmm. So uh, he brought the wine over to his mom. He named it after his grandmother, which was really nice. But the inspiration from this wine, I said, you still get the inspiration from Mel? Like, for real? <laughs> the inspiration was that him and Mel used to go and buy this barefoot wine that, um, I'm so maybe, nah, maybe it was shut at home. But they sold out of it. Nobody, they couldn't find it no more. So he was like, if I can't find it, why can't I make it myself? Mm -hmm. That's the kind of mindset that I have. If it doesn't yeah. exist, I'm going to figure out a way to get it. Go ahead and create exist. it, man. Well, recreate it anyway. Yeah. So he decided, <clears> listen. <throat> Boom. Let's get my mama to test out the wine. I said, mm-mm. That's mm -mm. the wrong person because even that wine was butt nasty. Mama ain't going to tell you. Oh, this is good, man. Uh -huh, this is good, yep. And after a couple of sips, it all start to taste the same anyway. That's why when you go to the barrels and whatnot, they start you off with premium. Then they I'm, turn you over. I'm going to give you proof why you never get your opinion about any product or service from your family uh -oh. that you're trying to offer in the marketplace. Uh-oh. American Idol. And I'm just going to leave it right there. American Idol. Because <laughs> your parent will tell you yeah, that you yeah, can sing. you can sing and let you go on national TV to That's make a fool. fool out yourself. That's what friends and family would do to you. Point mother bucking. Right. So she did pick out her favorite wine, but even Martel was like, at this point, yeah, it's mama, mama over here. Mama was like, just drinking. She just drinking. She <laughs> over here. Yeah. Dying. yeah. And that sweet red, <clears throat> don't mess with it. That sweet red will get you toe up so fast, all that sugar in it. Uh-huh. So now we're learning that Martel <laughs> has this book signing, right? Because him and the kids made a um, book that they're selling and whatnot. And we've learned in this conversation that Martel was aware that the weekend that he wanted to do the book signing was also his off weekend off week. for the kids. Right. He said that he made Mel aware of this book signing, whatever. 
let's just go ahead through the whole thing because in this, we realized we got all the way to the book signing and whatnot, and Mel did not bring the kids. Right. Martel was in his feelings like you wouldn't believe the assistant was trying to contact Mel, phone going straight to voicemail. I feel like the assistant kind of was trying to give Martel some good advice, but keeping it so low key that I was like, what the hell is she saying? Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. I was like, what what, what exactly are you trying to tell him? For me, this is what I took from it. Y'all going to have to learn how to co-parent. And y'all going to have to have some really good boundaries and conversations about what is and what is not. Because now it seems like Martel is using the court order as a way to, I'm going to use the word manipulate, hmm. that... If I feel that something is special, even if it's on my weekend off, you need to do what it takes to have yeah, these children here. here. In a grand scheme of things, that could be true if you all had a decent conversation, conversation about, it. Yeah. about the fact that a, right. I tried to have it on another weekend. This <clears throat> isn't the weekend that can work. This is the only weekend. I am quite sure Mel as a parent would have said, you know what, Martel? Bet. I'll make sure that those kids are there on my weekend so that this can go off without a hitch. Never a doubt in my mind that I don't think Mel would have done that. I think he approached it as if, I'm going to have it on this day. I want my kids there. And and because the 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 cop you know because you know when he came over there to the um uh, to the to the coffee house and the tea house he said yep. I got my stuff right here you know it's in my phone right here you know he comes with the paperwork to manipulate the fact that I know this ain't my weekend but the, but the paperwork says yes. special occasions <laughs> I can get my kids to where I need to get them to and she said to hell with you my phone is off <laughs> all you can do is send a freaking email. <laughs> And I'm sitting here like, I have so many uh, yeah. thoughts on this. Because I'm like, Mel, don't, no. you can't manipulate me into doing what you want me to do. We don't know how that whole thing played out of who asks when, where, or why. But this is just my little piece. What was it, baby? If Mel did not say, Montel, I'm going to bring the kids What's his to name? The, Montel. <laughs> his name Montel. I meant Montel. If you ain't going to bring the kids to the book signing, don't have it. If you didn't get a solid, because you you setting yourself up for embarrassment. But however, we know how Martell is. I just go ahead and have it so I can make Mel look bad. bad. That make it look like she, I had a book signing for our kids and they authors and, and they authors and I'm signing their books and now the kids is reading the books to the kids that showed up. It looks so depressing and yeah. everybody kept walking up. Well, where's the kids? I you felt know? uncomfortable. Like I'm, I, yeah, I felt uncomfortable for a grown man up there signing books for kids. <laughs> but I mean, but I guess you gotta do what you gotta do till you get where you're going. Right. But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just wouldn't have it. But we know how how they roll. Uh, yeah, I. I <sighs> I yeah. think this was a situation where Martel wanted what he wanted and it did not work out the way that he wanted it right. to work out. And here's another <laughs> thing. This is you reaping what you sow. Yeah, I was going to ready to insert that. Yeah, you you put all this into motion. You put all of this into motion. Yep. So whatever Cause, happens cause, behind it but happens behind it. Because even one of the ladies that came to sign the book, she said when he was telling her mm -hmm. that the kids were with the mom and he hoping that they're going to walk through the door anytime soon, she said, welcome, welcome to, to divorce. divorce. Yeah. Yeah. So then we see <clears throat> Mel over at the house having a FaceTime with her mom because she's packing up. Look, that baby Milani just makes me smile. Yeah. She is <clears throat> such a joy. Oh, my yes. God. And, um... Look just like Martel too. She looks like both of them. <laughs> and um, so Mel is getting ready to take the kids out to her hometown because she's had two deaths back to back. So it seems mm -hmm. like she went one weekend, which was the weekend that Mel, uh, Martel had the kids. And now this weekend, she has yeah, to double back, back and go back yeah. um, home. And so now her family gets to meet the kids and whatnot. And um, she told her mom that she received an email a few days ago that was saying, you know, how can I get my... Something about the kids' hair. Getting the kids' hair done for the book signing. And she said, I ain't never had this conversation with him. So basically, I read the email and I didn't read it. Read. And I was like, huh. <laughs> well, darn. <laughs> yeah. 
at this point, Martel, you get what you get. But at the same time, like Martel said, it's such a lose-lose because if the kids were as excited as he said that they were about being authors and having this book signing, then it kind of is like, dang, they yeah. missed out. But <clears throat> but there can you, be more. <laughs> but if you but if you knew that, they would be disappointed not have it for their feelings and not embarrassment for their mom. So that's why I'm believing that this they just inserted this in here to bring to add the drama. I don't know. Uh, that's what <clears throat> that's what I'm thinking. But we know in the real world that people do that. We do. They use the kids against each other. Like and then like you said, if it was Mel's weekend. Um, his weekend and Mel did that to him. How would he, he would felt? be pissed? Yeah. So, and I love how phone was straight to voicemail. He was like, "I got my kids, so anything else is going on with you is on you." Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a darn. And I'm with her on that one. Like, what we got to talk about? My kids are here safe with me. So, what we got to talk about? You know, <laughs> you you can send you can send an email or call my mama because that's you know when, when you start co-parenting. The mama is the fail safe. If you really, if it's that important, because you know mamas don't be on that BS, mm -hmm. it's really important. Call my mama. She'll get in touch with me. Uh, yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how I've been. So, Marceau is talking to his family. They're sitting there, you know, he's admitting that he doesn't know how to make some more funny story this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Stella's mom was up here for a few weeks, and none of us have ever did some more mm -mm. <laughs> ever. Nope. Nope. So we're outside, and of course, we had to rig it up. We had to ghetto it up. We did it on the grill, yep. <laughs> and we're outside <laughs> toasting these goddamn marshmallows. <laughs> Get ready to burn our freaking yard up, and this stuff was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it, it was. was yeah, it was, but it was a fun experience. Yeah, it's more about yeah, it's more about the spirit mm -hmm. and the taste of it. Yeah, but Marcel's son was like, "Listen, you can open up." Black and cigar bars, no. build houses, apartment complexes, do all this. But you gonna know how to make some more. <laughs> that's how it goes. That's usually how it go. Yeah, that, that's how it goes, baby. Yeah, such is life. <laughs> but I was laughing because Marceau's experience about going to Africa is like everyone that mm -hmm. I know's experience when they get mm -hmm. back. They woke. They woke. <laughs> they woke as hell. <laughs> and oh my God, my bishop, love my bishop. Bishop used to go to Africa. Which is one of the reasons that we didn't go to Africa. Because I was like, if I come back acting like that, I don't want to go. <laughs> we were getting ready to go to Africa with him. And we were like, every time you go to Africa, you come back like nothing. Like, you're just so discontent with everything else. Yeah. But the peace and the harmony you saw in Africa. <laughs> and everything else is about family and being even killed and this, this, this. Uh -huh. Until... It'd be like two weeks later, we'd be back. Mm -mm. <laughs> so that's how he is. He's in that, that, oh, I've had my moment. I'm woke. And, you know, you all need to experience this. So now they're trying to plan a family trip back to Africa and yeah. all these. You, yeah, generational wealth is about spending time with the family. Your wife been trying to take, take you that, that for years. Hell, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, <clears throat> you got to go to Africa and get woke about it. But he, I mean, but he wanted to say it right. You know, mm -hmm. we, we playing and joking. But yeah, um, a part of generational wealth is having those memories, like mm -hmm. of what you did with your family, and not having memories of all you did was work, 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 work. And then you get too old to enjoy any of the fruits of your labor. Right. And then next thing you know, you get the diabetes and the heart problem, and then you're gone with me. Yeah, cause um, cause <clears throat> um, what my mama um does uh, for a living um at nursing home, that. She hear them say all the time their regrets. They wish that they had actually used the money that they accumulated in their life. They didn't think they was going to end up in the nursing home. And the wealth that they built is paying for that life and not the life that they thought they were going to have at the mm. end. That's something. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, that is. That is something. Yeah. But speaking of generational wealth, <clears throat> going back to Martell in the book, I really mm -hmm. did like why he decided to write the book. Yeah, was, that and, was um, awesome. Yeah. Because I think it's a lot of our stories. He was saying that um, growing up, you know, um, his mom didn't have the money for them to travel. And I mean, that's our story as well. We didn't right. start traveling until we got married. Yeah. And he was saying that, you know, this was a book where children that weren't able to do things like that could live in Buy the moment. Yeah. yeah. And be able to feel like they were on a plane going to Canada mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I was like, I love that idea. Because yeah. even though it's left to a child's imagination, 
it gives them an outlet to actually want to pursue those things. Right. So I, I really <clears throat> enjoyed that part of it and why he did it. And coming from the perspective of being a parent that was able to give that to their children when yeah. they didn't have it is even more special. Yeah. And that's generational wealth too. Yes. So let's talk about um Maurice and Kimmy, they're finally going on, on that honeymoon, honeymoon man. Three is, and a is, half. Is, is Destiny yeah. going? Stop it. <laughs> If only um, Jalen could go. So is they going on the one? Because they didn't say. Is they going on the one that she paid for? They didn't say. They didn't no, say. Maurice said this the one he played. Oh, okay. But he also But that's what he lied about. <laughs> yeah. He also lied about being there. So, you know, <laughs> Maurice quit. <laughs> but um, she came home and she told um, Maurice about Kiki being there and at the pajama party and whatnot. And Maurice was like, so maybe you just need to have a conversation with everybody. And and I'm saying to myself, there ain't no conversation to be yeah, had. Yeah. I said, this ain't nothing but a, 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 a ball in motion so that we can get the drama started. Because Kimmy don't even roll like that. It, it, <laughs> it's always like this. You tired of being the person who has to be the referee and the coach of fixing issues that you didn't even start. That you just happened to yeah, be. Yeah, you ain't even put the fire out, but everybody wants you. You didn't start the fire, but everybody wants you to put the fire out. I'm tired of going grabbing the fire extinguisher and calling the fire department to put it out because y'all ain't no getting mad at me. Like that night we <clears> ended up going out and found out somebody had a stripper pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. So that basically was the episode. Yeah. Like, basically, this was the episode to show everyone that Mel did not bring the kids to the book signing. And I understand Mel's thing all together. This won't your weekend. You did not coordinate this with me. You you voluntold me. Yeah. And I voluntoldly <laughs> told you, uh -huh, no. She said, God said go. And she went to her hometown straight from the VA. <laughs> That's dirty, dirty sound. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla.